Madam Deputy Speaker, <clears throat> Honorable President, after an absence of 10 years in this House, I see that the more things change, the more they stay the same. In 2009, as the Leader of the Opposition, I called for a dedicated oversight committee of the Presidency. We have nine such committees in the provinces, and the question is, why not here? In the past two months, I've heard the same chorus being sung by a new choir. When will the refrain be heard? Why is the presidency so averse to direct inclusive oversight? Is it because your office has become a bloated super department with multiple ministries and deputy ministries, as enumerated by former Judge Kope? Or is it because you just do not want to account to this House? I know that the past Parliament conducted a study tour in this regard to the British Houses of Parliament, and I've read the report. However, in using the Westminster model to reach its conclusions, it didn't compare apples with apples. The British Prime Minister faces weekly public scrutiny oversight in Prime Minister's question times. These questions relate only to the matters that the Prime Minister handles directly, which are relatively few as many substantive matters are handled by the various ministers and their departments. In your case, Honourable President, this is considerably different. And what's more, the opportunities for MPs to ask you questions are severely limited to courtly opportunities that are frankly sanitised due to the mechanical procedures and foregoing submission processes. In light of this and the fact that we are hearing your report for the first time today, we as Action SA reinforce that we should have an oversight committee of the presidency. For example, Operation Vullingela that was conceptualized to coordinate the work of key priority departments and break down silos, whilst a noble idea, it has essentially become a dual civil service or a new government department with all the related costs, and it serves only to treat the symptoms of departmental dysfunction and not their cause. Listening to the new minister, Deputy Minister of Energy and Electricity lamenting here today confirms this. Look at transport, where Vulingela has specific focus. Our roads are being destroyed by trucks carrying rail freight on them because the rail network was allowed to be destroyed. Bulk freight rail for coal and manganese should never be allowed to be on our roads. And if it wasn't for the connected elite who are heavily invested in road freight transport, it wouldn't be allowed. This needs oversight. Manganese export management in Nelson Mandela Bay is parlous. It's destroying municipal and state infrastructure and compromising public health. The manganese terminal and fuel tankers at the Port Elizabeth Harbour should have been relocated to Kucha IDZ and the Port of Mocha years ago, but the deadlines keep moving. It's because these facilities are depreciated and thus much more profitable to continue using them as new environmentally compliant facilities would drastically reduce profit. Your past presidency was defined by the establishment of multiple commissions, committees and projects. These require leadership, decision making and action that have been conspicuous by their absence. This is yet another reason we need an oversight committee. As it, is, as it can cut through impervious defensiveness, which reflects poorly on government and in fact gave rise to state capture in the fourth and fifth parliaments that you called the nine wasted years. Now that there's a new political dispensation, hopefully the new voices in your coalition government and the noise from your erstwhile comrades now occupying the opposition benches will galvanize you into action and promote the kind of ethical leadership that South Africa so desperately deserves. Honourable President, we haven't had 118 days of no load shedding. There's a new euphemism. It's called load reduction. It means the same thing. I want to agree with Honourable Malema, who said that the lily mine matter and the Hammond's Kraal water matter has been appallingly handled. But what he's just done sounds like expropriation without compensation to me because it's Action SA that has stood by those families of the Lily Mine tragedy, and it's an Action SA deputy mayor that will ensure that the people of Hammanskral have water in their taps by the end of September. In conclusion, Mr. President, I remember that you came to Nelson Mandela Bay on the 25th of March. You said you had crime under control. 
What I remember about that day, you went to lunch at Brooks Hill Pavilion and your VIP protection convoy filled the parking lot. People are still dying in Nelson Mandela Bay. You do not have crime under control.